There's been a lot of Warhammer 3 gameplay over the last week. Essentially our first uncut, unedited, filterless view of what we have in store come early 2022. So like we've done in the past when a new wave of footage hits YouTube, we're going to tackle the good, the bad, the ugly, my thoughts and impressions on how things are shaping up so far. Naturally, as sieges and the reworks associated with them are being marketed as one of the major selling points here, we'll focus on those first, and as the title of the video might imply, it's a bit of a mixed bag on that front. On the one hand, the battle maps themselves appear to be noticeably improved compared to previous games in the trilogy. They are simply more dynamic and interesting, there's more tactics you can employ, there's more terrain to fight over that can actually influence your strategy, something that's kind of been lacking in previous games that have been rolling hills devoid of any interesting terrain features, and they simply do a better job of reflecting the Warhammer world in all its glory. The Realms of Chaos maps in particular are striking a high point with me, and I expect them to get even more exciting as we head into the Plague Lord's Mansion and the Six Circles of Sinesh's Seduction. The colors, the atmosphere, the playing spaces themselves, all coming together quite nicely, I feel, and that's true for the minor settlement battles as well. That Ogre Kingdom's fight at the Sky Monolith against Korn was an awesome first look at the layouts for minor settlements and how those maps tend to flow against the AI. And they don't really feel all that minor, honestly. At least if the one they showed is a good blueprint for those of the other races. It's pretty damn huge. A lot of ways to approach it on the attack and on defense. Of course, I still have some reservations about minor settlement battles and the most important ones are simply based on diversity and AI behavior. Sieges are far and away the most common battle type in Warhammer 2. Especially as you start approaching mid and late game, it becomes incredibly grindy playing those same tired siege battles over and over. And honestly, even if they were super well done, which I think we can mostly agree they're not great in Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, they'd still get boring after a while if that's all you're doing. The AI gravitates towards defending their frontline settlements from a position of acquiescence, I would say, and that they'll let you rampage throughout their countryside and march through their territory until they either get multiple stacks that they think will overpower yours, or until you bite the bullet and engage them while they're toasting marshmallows and camping inside their own fortress. And because players tend to march around with very powerful armies, the AI typically doesn't think they can beat you 1v1 on an open field dead, so they cower inside their settlements, which means siege after siege after siege after siege. We're now replacing field battles when two armies fight at a minor settlement with real village siege scenarios. Why might that potentially be an issue? Well, it means there will likely be even more siege battles and even less open field battles in Warhammer 3, which could run counter to the intent of improving the diversity of battle types. The question here is, is that going to be the only Ogre Minor Settlement map? And even if there were, say, two, three, or four minor variations of that map, will that be enough to not get boring? Because as good as that layout is, and make no mistake, I think it's a gorgeously designed battle map that looks like a blast to play, I would much rather play 50 open field battles than 50 minor settlement battles on that same layout. I just think that land battles lend themselves better to tactical diversity, and they're much more free-flowing than the constant choke points and blob fights of a siege. So minor settlement fights have the potential to be a great addition to the series, but only in palatable doses, and in a series that's already plagued with way too many sieges, I feel, and is somewhat lacking on the open field front, I think it's fair to have a little bit of concern there. Which brings us to the topic of Siege AI, which has kind of been at the forefront of Total War discussion, ever since the infamous Battle of Carthage trailer and the run-up to Rome 2's launch, which means it's been in the public eye and source of fierce debate for the better part of a decade at this point. And surprise, surprise, Siege AI in Warhammer 3 seems pretty hit or miss. Now, in my siege battle with Zinj vs. Cathay, it certainly did a few questionable things, but overall, I'd say it was fine. That's why it wasn't really a point of emphasis in my video covering it. I focused on the magical outpouring and insane DPS of the changer of ways in that video. But in terms of the AI showcase there, it was not good, not terrible, not really noticeable one way or the other. It did what it was supposed to do, barring a particular unit archetype we'll talk about in a moment. In the corn attacking Ogre Kingdom's minor settlement battle, I'd say it performed quite well for Total War AI, but that was with an all melee army roided up to the gills with the Blood God's favor. Like, you could be a lobotomized idiot who's never played a game in your life, and you could still rack up a bunch of kills with a right click touch dick strat when Bloodthirsters and Soul Grinders of Corn are first into the breach. It doesn't require much processing power from the AI to be content with yoloing in their best troops and winning. 
That's what Korn does. But when it's a more finesse-oriented faction like Cathay, we saw a lot more cracks in the battle AI, and that's what many people saw in Legends' video, where it had a significantly worse performance in his siege fight. I'd go so far as to say that AI there was drastically worse in his Korn vs. Cathay siege than in my Zinj vs. Cathay siege, and I must say, I'm not entirely sure what caused that discrepancy. All I can say is that it certainly existed and it was noticeable if you watched both battles. I mean, multiple times you would see high-level halberds turn their flank and retreat from monsters or monstrous infantry they could put a serious whooping on. Multiple times, crane gunners and crossbows would have an opportunity to fire armor-piercing shots unimpeded into melee scrums, and instead, they would prioritize retreating to a secondary or tertiary capture point, which ultimately meant they ended up not firing at all. They misallocated their units at the start, investing way too many troops against the small attacks on the side walls, while mostly ignoring the main assault at their front gate, and they made the situation even worse by just not fighting and constantly trying to reposition once the battle actually started, which is especially terrible for higher tier melee units because they're turning their backs and losing all their melee defense to try and escape from demons that are way faster than them. So instead of sticking in and dealing damage once it's obvious they have to commit and can't reposition, the constant falling back meant they did literally nothing and took tons of free damage, which is very disappointing for tier five celestial dragon guard and all of those kind of troops. One theme that held true across both siege battles was that sky junks and sky lanterns seem to have zero idea of what they're doing. In both battles, they kind of just floated around aimlessly, waiting to get surrounded by flyers and die a horrible death. And in fact, they went out of their way to actively engage bloodthirsters of all things, instead of attempting to create space and fire in with their 700 plus missile damage. Now don't get me wrong, powerful single entity flyers are quite literally the hard counter to sky junks, and it's a relatively complex maneuver, especially in sieges, to keep AP range troops in reserve with line of sight to zone out the targets that threaten your sky junks. Even real players struggle with tactics like that in multiplayer all the time, and there's even more confounding variables in a siege scenario where buildings can block your crossbow's line of sight. So that's not an easy thing. I'm not expecting tons of great play there from the AI. Defending your back line or flying investments can be quite challenging for real players. I'm not expecting the computer to handle that well. But I also don't want to see Sky Junks actively seeking a glorious death against monsters they have zero hope against, nor do I want to see them floating around dazed and confused for 10 minutes at a time, not doing anything. And in both battles, I barely saw them fire. So it definitely seems like something needs to change for them. Now, I'm hardly an expert on AI. I'd imagine very few of us are, considering it's the most complex element to design and develop in any strategy game but you don't have to be an expert in designing artificial intelligence to know when it's not behaving correctly. And if I had to speculate, I'd say most of the bad CJI moments in the Korn vs. Cathay fight at Wei Jin seemed to happen because they were being given rapidly shifting priorities based on CA's new siege mechanics. In fact, in their very own blog post, they stated, the AI also has a greater understanding of how different areas of the map are under threat and they will withdraw to them to prevent losses which is all a part of the features they're introducing here to encourage battle AI to use more of the map and present a more dynamic defense. I love those ideas in theory of the AI utilizing more of a settlement so we can experience those multi-layered defenses, but it can't come at the cost of units running away from good engagements or turning their back and dying to significantly worse units just for the sake of novelty. And yeah, when we're seeing tier five halberds retreating from chaos spawn and minotaurs when they're full HP, that is a clear-cut problem. That is a ton of value they could generate in very short order, and instead they're just running away for no discernible reason. So you're kind of seeing why siege layouts were so tiny and cookie-cutter, and maybe a bit uninspired in Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, because it's way easier for the computer to handle, when there's very little to retreat to, and just that final capture point that's one or two streets back from the main walls, well, then the AI can just kind of group up in that main plaza and do what they want to do. When you start adding more depth to the siege layout, then the algorithms powering them appear to be at odds as the battle develops, and we start seeing indecisiveness when troops are caught out of position. Which is why we kept seeing crossbows retreating when they should have been shooting, and celestial dragon guard halberds pulling back when they could have just been mulching monsters. 
There are going to be examples of the AI just kind of breaking down and being unable to put up a remotely decent defense because they're constantly repositioning and their programming is pulling them in seven different directions. Of that, I have no doubt. But it's also a problem that didn't show up in every gameplay that's been uploaded. In fact, of the eight or so battles that I've seen so far, I'd say the AI was only egregiously bad in the Korn vs. Cathay Siege. So, one of them. Like I said, wasn't particularly terrible in either of the two battles I uploaded. Nothing to write home about, nothing fantastic, but did just fine overall and was fine in most of the other ones I saw as well. So, if you're arguing the Siege AI is going to be on some Rome 2 launch day shit, I'd say you probably weren't there on day one Rome 2, or you don't remember how bad it was. I mean, back then, we had entire armies running around in circles to the point of exhaustion, not reacting to troops five feet in front of their face, insane blobbing, horrendous performance, game-breaking bugs and crashes and all kinds of shenanigans. The fact that we're seeing legit, uncut gameplay three months before launch here, and that we have a fairly good understanding of how AI behaves in Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, already puts us miles and miles ahead of where we were back in those days. But this might be a case where keeping it stupid simple is the best play for CJI, having them adopt a conservative strategy of defending the walls, then the supply bases, then maybe a few troops in reserve at the final capture point. But once they've chosen a location to defend, unless they're fast movers and can quickly reposition, they need to stay there and fight until they rout. You don't want to see your halberds pulling away from Chaos Spawn just so they can run back to the final capture point. It doesn't make any sense. They're not going to make it, first and foremost, but they could be generating great value. AI needs to let their halberds fight the stuff that they're good at killing. I'm also curious to see how things have changed from the range and magic meta side we had in Game 2. I am aware CA is taking steps to bring AI melee bonuses back into line on higher difficulties, so thankfully, very hard battle difficulties should no longer have peasant mob trading evenly with white lions, but in these preview battles, Zinch really does look quite a bit stronger than Korn or the Ogre Kingdoms, and he was kind of just able to fly overhead and blow things up while taking minimal casualties. Won't necessarily play out that way against a real-life opponent, but still seems to be the most abusable faction against the computer, and if I'd liken them to a Game 2 faction, Zinch does seem very similar to Skaven in a lot of aspects. That overwhelming range firepower is just brutal for the AI to handle. From a standpoint of pure spectacle, I think Warhammer 3 is shaping up great. Siege layouts look nice, unit designs barring Chaos Ponies and a few of the mortals are inspired and looking freaking sick right now. Demons are very well represented here, and the Ogre roster is looking awesome as well. The spell effects, the lighting, the color palette of the Realms of Chaos in particular, and the overall look and feel of each army is spot on. It's quintessential Warhammer. And the battles themselves still look fun, although perhaps not as distinctly improved from previous games as some would have wanted. I think the new layouts will help with that to an extent, but ultimately, it will come down to how well the AI can handle them. And while on the attack they seem fine, and in open field battles and minor settlement battles they seem fine as well, perhaps they will struggle a bit more on the defending side in walled sieges, where their command protocols are constantly at odds with each other as they retreat back to the more important capture points. It's definitely something CA needs to look into and think about addressing before launch, but ultimately, it was refreshing to see some uncut gameplay here for good and bad and ugly, and while you should certainly have some reservations going into this, I think there's plenty to look forward to as well. Leave your feedback down below, and hopefully Creative Assembly can take that in stride and forge an even better product come February 17th. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Any pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.